Today I'm going to examine whether the Iglesia de Cristo is a cult or not. My fellow Filipinos, brothers and sisters in the Iglesia de Cristo whom I love, do you really want to trust your eternal soul to the teachings of men? Hey guys, I'm a former member and officer of the church for over 20 years, born and raised. I decided to leave and pursue the truth when I discovered multiple inconsistencies with the teachings being taught when I started reading the context of the verses being read. First of all, let's look at the definition of what a cult is. A religion or religious sect generally considered to be extremist or false, with its followers often living in an unconventional manner under the guidance of an authoritarian, charismatic leader. Growing up in the church, I noticed that a lot of other people, including friends, regarded the Iglesia de Cristo as a cult. I had unwavering faith in the church and I was very active in inviting friends. Some of them actually became Bible students. Over time, they would either tell me that it was a cult, or they would slowly slip away without telling me why. After finding inconsistencies with what was taught, I began extensive research and I came across a cult checklist. We're going to go over this checklist together and see how the Iglesia de Cristo matches up. Let's read the intro. Concerted efforts at influence and control lie at the core of cultic groups, programs, and relationships. Many members, former members, and supporters of cults are not fully aware of the extent to which members may have been manipulated, exploited, even abused. The following list of social, structural, social, psychological, and interpersonal behavior patterns commonly found in cultic environments may be helpful in assessing a particular group or relationship. Compare these patterns to the situation you were in or in which you, a family member, or friend is currently involved. This list may help you determine if there is cause for concern. Bear in mind that this list is not meant to be a cult scale or a definitive checklist to determine if a specific group is a cult. This is not so much a diagnostic instrument as it is an analytical tool. The group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader and whether he or she is alive or dead, regards their belief system, ideology, and practices as the truth, as law. The Iglesia de Cristo is undoubtedly zealous and they don't question their leader who is Felix Manalo, and regard his belief system as law. Check. Next, questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. I recall numerous times when I was in a Bible study when a member would ask multiple questions, the minister would eventually ask them, are you doubting the teachings of the church? Asking many questions would have you labeled a doubter by the other members. As a result, in the Iglesia de Cristo culture, they don't encourage lots of questions. Check. Mind-altering practices such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, denunciation sessions, and debilitating work routines are used in excess and serve to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. Some would consider the constant teaching of proving why their church is the only one to be saved mind-altering, but we won't check this one. The leadership dictates, sometimes in great detail, how members should think, act, and feel. For example, members must get permission to date, change jobs, marry, or leaders prescribe what types of clothes to wear, where to live, whether or not to have children, how to discipline children, and so forth. The church administration definitely dictates how members should think, act, and feel. Dating people outside of the church is discouraged, and members are only allowed to marry other members. The Iglesia de Cristo has been caught doing block voting and can only get jobs that don't conflict with worship service schedules. Check. The group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leader, and members. For example, the leaders considered the Messiah, a special being, an avatar, for the group and her leader is on a special mission to save humanity. It's definitely elitist, claiming that the Filipino people have replaced the Jews as God's chosen people. They claim that Jesus Christ's work of salvation was not sufficient and that a messenger, Felix Y. Manalo, from the Philippines would complete Jesus' work in 1914. Check. The group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict with the wider society. They believe that they are the only true church to be saved and everyone else is going to hell. They also believe that God only hears the prayers of that church, and they even held a campaign named, If you're not with us, you're against us. Check. The leader is not accountable to any authorities, unlike, for example, teachers, military commanders, or ministers, priests, monks, and rabbis of mainstream religious denominations. The founder and leader of the Iglesia de Cristo believes that only he and those he trains can interpret the Bible correctly, and that all mainstream religious denominations are false. Check. 
The group teaches or implies that its supposedly exalted ends justify whatever means it deems necessary. This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities they would have considered reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. For example, lying to family or friends or collecting money for bogus charities. There are some things that come to mind here, but we'll later discuss this in other parts of the checklist, so we'll give this a no. The leadership induces feelings of shame and or guilt in order to influence and or control members. Often this is done through peer pressure and subtle forms of persuasion. During the lessons, the minister would always preach that God would bless those that follow the commands, such as never missing worship services, giving offerings, and they would also say that if you disobeyed these commandments, God would punish you in the form of curses such as sickness, harm, and suffering. When a member misses a worship service, they are visited and asked by the leadership why they couldn't attend and are persuaded to attend the next worship service. Check. Subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with family and friends and radically alter the personal goals and activities they had before joining the group. We'll give this one a no. The group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. A big yes on this one. Since they believe that they're the only church to be saved, they are always encouraging members to invite guests to Bible studies, worship services, and events. They even hold meetings to strategize how to invite the most guests and give rewards and certificates to those that do, and also to those who convert the most people. Check. The group is preoccupied with making money. Huge yes here. Giving offerings are regarded as a command and are required to be given during each worship service. If you don't give an offering, it is looked down upon and it's likely to be gossiped about. In addition to the weekly offerings, each month you are asked to give a certain amount, and at the end of the year the compiled amount is given. Check. Members are expected to devote inordinate amounts of time to the group and group-related activities. Yes to this as well. I was an adult choir member and a children's worship service officer, and I would have to be at church on Sunday for about seven hours. After worship service, we would immediately have choir practice. When we would practice for special occasions, it would last hours, and sometimes I wouldn't have the time to even eat lunch. Check. Members are encouraged or required to live and or socialize only with other group members. No. The most loyal members, the true believers, feel there can be no life outside the context of the group. They believe there is no other way to be, and often fear reprisals to themselves or others if they leave, or even consider leaving, the group. The most loyal members who believe they are the true believers feel like membership is everything. They believe that their salvation is dependent upon this membership and they can't imagine life outside of the church. In some cases, members are scared to leave the church. For example, kids who no longer believe in the teachings still remain in the church because they know that their parents will be reprimanded if they leave. Ministers and other members who want to leave have also reported being kidnapped and some have ended up being killed. I also want to go over a pattern of all false religions. A particular individual who eventually proclaims him or herself to be a prophet, who creates or discovers a particular authoritative set of writings based on visions or encounters with a supposed angelic messenger or deity, who then uses those experiences and writings to proclaim 1. a false god, 2. a false savior, and 3. a false salvation. With this well-worn path, countless lives and souls have been destroyed. Let's now take a look at a few false religions and notice the similarities. Notice that all of these religions are fairly new. 1914, 1870s, 1830, 1863. Each and every one of these religions claim that they are the only religion to be saved. Starting with the Iglesia de Cristo, the false prophet is Felix Y. Manalo. They believe that only he can interpret the Bible properly. They deny the Trinity. Christ is just a man but is worshipped, and they believe that salvation can only be attained by being a member of this church. For the Jehovah's Witnesses, their false prophet is Charles Taze Russell. They believe that the Watchtower has authority over the Bible. They also deny the Trinity. They believe that Christ is just a man, and is also Archangel Michael. They believe that only 144,000 Jehovah's Witnesses will go to heaven. The Mormons have Joseph Smith, Jr. They believe that the Book of Mormon from Joseph Smith is the most correct book even over the Bible. They believe that Adam is God and the father of Jesus. 
They believe that there are many gods like Jesus. And they believe there's different levels of the afterlife which is dependent on your works. Seventh-day Adventists have Ellen G. White. They believe her writings are authoritative. They believe in the Trinity, but Jesus is also Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael became Jesus on earth and they deny his deity. They also believe there is no hell and the wicked are annihilated. Satan is a liar and a deceiver. What better way to deceive the masses than to appear as a sheep in wolf's clothing? He appears to be light, but in actuality he is darkness. There exists only one truth. Religion is man-made, a work system to get God to love you. The truth is, God has found a way to say I love you to each and every single person. He's simply waiting for you to say you love him back. He's seeking a relationship with you. You don't have to earn his love by your works. He already loves you. My fellow Filipinos, brothers and sisters in the Iglesia de Cristo whom I love, do you really want to trust your eternal soul to the teachings of men, Felix Y. Manalo and the administration, who believe that only they can interpret the Bible properly? Eternity is a long time to be wrong. Brothers and sisters, repent of your sins and turn to the truth because Jesus Christ is coming back soon. If this is your first time on my channel, I'd love it if you subscribed. I'm going to be posting more Iglesia de Cristo content along with Christianity, answers to life's deepest questions, entrepreneurship, education on a variety of topics, and lastly, entertainment. Thank you for watching and God bless each and every one of you.